gentlemen, good day and welcome to Max Healthcare Institute Limited Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anup Pujari from CDR India. Thank you and over to you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Max Healthcare's Q4 and FY24 uh, earnings conference call. We have with us Mr. Abhay Soy, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Yogesh Sari, Senior Director and Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Keshu Gupta, Senior Director, Growth, M&A, and Business Planning of the company. We will begin the call with opening remarks from the management, following which we'll have the forum open for a que interactive question and answer session. Before we start, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the earnings presentation shared with you earlier. I would now like to invite Abhay to make his opening remarks. A very good afternoon to everyone and a warm welcome to Max Healthcare's earnings call for the last quarter of fiscal 2024. This has been yet another noteworthy year for us. We witnessed a robust growth in revenue and profitability with both gross revenue and operating EBITDA registering a 16 to 17% growth year on year. We touched all time highs for all our key operating and financial metrics, including RPOB, margin, and EBITDA per bed. This year also marked our foray into two new cities, namely Nagpur and Lucknow, adding approximately 750 beds to our existing bed capacity with further expansion potential. Both these cities represent key markets in the fast-growing and populous states of Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh. We consummated the Nagpur transaction on February 9 for a net consideration of Rs. 395 crores financed through internal accruals and QIP funds. While the Lucknow transaction was consummated on March 7 for a net consideration of 993 crores with Rs. 600 crores being financed through external debt. We have already embarked upon the performance improvement journey for these hospitals, which includes a revamping of existing infrastructure, expansion of bed capacity, strengthening of clinical talent, and establishing a robust sales and marketing program. These hospitals have been renamed as Max Super Speciality Hospital Lucknow and Max Super Speciality Hospital Nagpur. We expect them to be the key drivers for future growth in these regions. In addition, we have also acquired 5.44 acres of prime land at Shahid Path in Lucknow with the potential to build approximately 550 beds. The plans for this hospital will be firmed up once we turn around the operations of uh, Max Super Speciality Hospital, Lucknow. Now coming to the quarter four performance, this is our 14th consecutive quarter of year-on-year -year growth. The new hospitals have added rupees 42 crores of revenue and rupees 3 crores of EBITDA and a net loss of rupees 11 crores during Q4, including one time transaction expenses. Consequently, overall network gross revenue stood at 1890 crores, registering a growth of 15% year on year and 6% quarter on quarter. While network operating EBITDA was rupees 503 crores, a growth of 15% year on year and 7% quarter on quarter. Profit after tax dipped marginally to rupees 311 crores compared to rupees 320 crores in Q4 last year due to increase in effective tax rate having an impact of rupees 31 crores, net loss from the new hospitals of rupees 11 crores and movement in non-cash items of fair value of contingent consideration of rupees 25 crores, which reflects improved projected profitability for the managed hospitals. Growth numbers from here on are being shared on a like-for-like -like basis, excluding new hospitals. 
Average occupancy for the network was 75% occupied bed days rose marginally by around 1% year on year and 3% quarter on quarter, driven largely by increased admissions under preferred channels, which is cash, TPA and international. Growth in occupancy and footfall was impacted due to capacity constraints. Average revenue per occupied bed, RPOP, for the quarter improved to rupees 78,100, growing by 10% year on year and 2% quarter on quarter. Year on year growth was driven by increased share of super specialities such as oncology, neurology, and cardiac sciences, an increase in tariff, including that for the institutional segment. Institutional bed share was 29.1% compared to 29.2% last year and 29.5% in the previous quarter. However, after excluding Max Shalimar Bagh, the overall institutional bed share stood at 27% during Q4 and occupied bed days were down by 6% year on year for this segment. Network gross revenue was rupees 847 crores compared to 1637 crores in Q4 last year and rupees 1779 crores in the previous quarter. This reflects an increase of 13% year on year and 4% quarter on quarter. The international patient revenue grew by 14% year on year slightly subdued due to credit risk related actions taken by us and visa related issues in two markets. Network operating EBITDA touched the magic mark of rupees 500 crores, reflecting a growth of 14% year on year and 6% quarter on quarter. Most importantly, annualized EBITDA per bed rose to a highest ever of rupees 78.5 lakhs, clocking a growth of 12% year on year and 4% quarter on quarter while operating EBITDA margin stood at 28.4% for the quarter. Year-on-year -year growth in EBITDA was impacted due to cost of people hired for Dwarka Hospital, GST on variable management fee, and higher provisioning due to build-up of accounts receivable. Max Shalimar Bagh, where we added 122 beds, recorded year-on-year -year growth of 33% and 48% in its revenue and EBITDA respectively, with an average occupancy of 78%. Profit after tax was rupees 322 crores versus similar level in Q4 last year and rupees 338 crores in the previous quarter. Free cash flow from operations generated this quarter amounted to rupees 412 crores. Of this, rupees 176 crores was deployed towards the ongoing capacity expansion projects and rupees 1509 crores was spent for recent acquisitions. Consequently, net cash position stood at rupees 22 crores at the end of March 2024, compared to 733 crores same time last year. Continuing our efforts to support the local communities, we treated approximately 35,200 patients in OPD and 1,200 patients in IPD from economically weaker sections of society, entirely free of cost. Both our strategic business units continue to report significant growth in their revenue and profitability. Max at Home reported a top line of rupees 46 crores, reflecting a strong growth of 25% year on year and 3% quarter on quarter. This SBU continues to garner customer loyalty and has now expanded its footprint to over 10 cities. Max Laboratories, Max Lab, the non captive pathology vertical, now offers its services in 41 cities and has a network of over 1,100 collection centers and active partners. This SBU reported a gross revenue of rupees 39 crores, reflecting a growth of 26% year on year and 15% quarter on quarter. On the status of expansion projects, for 300 beds at Dwarka, we are awaiting last few licenses and will be ready to launch the hospital by early June. We expect to launch it by early June. We have already onboarded over 280 people, including senior doctors. For 329 beds at Nanavati, the hospital structure should be up by mid-July and the project is on schedule with expected completion by Q4 FY25. 375 beds at Max Mart at the Saket complex. Post the initial delay due to tree transplantation issues, 
This project has now been fast tracked and is expected to be completed by Q1 FY26, nine months ahead of the previously communicated timelines. For 155 beds at Mohali, the slab work for the three basements is underway and base raft has been completed in May. The number of beds has reduced due to change in configuration and requirement to build a fire ramp which is a new requirement as per Punjab fire authorities. Project completion is expected by Q1 FY26. For 300 beds at sector 56 Gurgaon, slab work for the three basements is in progress. The pace of work at the project has slowed down due to restricted working hours in view of adjoining residential complexes. This will likely impact the project timeline by a maximum of six months. For 250 beds at Patpat Ganj, fire and water departments have issued NOCs for the building plans while the EC and municipal corporation approvals are in process. Tendering work has been initiated. We expect it to be on schedule. For 300 beds at Max Vikrant at Saket Complex, the environmental clearance and the consent to establish have been received. Tendering work has been initiated. For Nagpur Hospital, Work has been initiated to add 25 beds to internal reconfiguration by Q3 FY25. While we are simultaneously firming up plans to augment infrastructure by another 140 beds. For Lucknow Hospital, we have commenced work for installing additional 140 beds and refurbishing existing 250 beds by December 2024. We plan to add another 140 beds by Q2 FY26, subject to requisite approval, further 50 beds will be added through internal configuration in FY26. In addition, we plan to put up a new tower of 350 beds by Q1 FY27. Finally, moving on to overall performance, including new hospitals, for the 12 months ended March 31, 2024. Network gross revenue stood at 7,215 crores, including new hospitals, reflecting a growth of 16% year-on-year. Network operating EBITDA grew by 17% year-on-year to 1,907 crores, including rupees 3 crores from new hospitals. Increased RPOB, improved case mix, and augmentation of network bed capacity translated into a 13% improvement in EBITDA per bed to rupees 74 lakhs. During the fiscal year, we generated 1,336 crores of free cash flows from operations after interest, tax, working capital changes, and routine capital expenditure, of which rupees 441 crores has been deployed towards ongoing expansion projects, rupees 97 crores was distributed as dividend, and rupees 1,509 crores was spent for recent acquisitions. With this, I would like to open the floor for questions and answers. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We'll take a first question from the line of Tushar Madhudane from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, firstly on uh, now, where we already have uh, acquired Tushar, this... Tushar, I'm sorry, can you use your handset mode, please? Your audio is not very clear. Is this better? Yes. Okay. Uh, sir, firstly on Lucknow, where we have acquired Sahara, where we also plan to add 140 beds and then another tower of 50 beds. So, if you could just explain conceptually uh, the need for this buying land at Shahid Park, Lucknow. That is my first question. Okay, firstly, you know, the size of UP itself uh, is the size of Europe and it is extremely, extremely underserved market. Uh, it has a major supply of clinical talent, okay, because traditionally you had many, many government hospitals and many sort of uh, this thing, it was well over there. It drains a lot of patients uh, to from various places, right up uh, from Bihar to right up to Nepal and so on. We believe that there is immense uh, 
uh, need uh, for quality infrastructure over there and our presence uh, at the in the, uh, you know in the lucknow market in the up market furthering our uh, presence over there will add to further volumes i mean uh, we barely been there since uh, uh, the 9th of march uh, and in the last couple of months itself we moved the capacity occupancy by 8% you know this our presence right now is taken up from 54 to 62% so that's the extent of ramp up that we expect um having said that uh, i would also like to tell you that uh, our uh, capacity our infrastructure is triple a plus over there it is right in the heart of uh, lucknow if uh, you're familiar with uh, lucknow uh, you know this is in the heart of gomti nagar 27 acres of land uh, and with access uh, like no other in terms of infrastructure it is superior in terms of location it is superior to anything else over there and uh, we are seeing i mean we believe there will be a lot of traction you know the the, the state of uh, up itself is is the kind of development which is happening i mean you just see the i mean the five airports which have been launched another four over there which are being launched the development which is happening aiming to be a 1 trillion dollar um economy by 2027 now it's not a matter whether they do it by 27 or 28 or 29 but the rate of development over there second to none i mean not second to none but right up there so you know development of any state any economy uh, the, the, the you know quality healthcare is a prerequisite i think you know there is a lot of more demand over there yeah understood sir uh, sir but just that uh, when we could have spread across maybe other city of lucknow because peers are also trying to at least build up 500 bedded hospital if not in lucknow but in other smaller cities so that can sort of you know uh, reduce the pace of patient flow to lucknow and they are also coming up with super specialty hospital at sir so so uh, so so from that perspective is understand the the demand is there across the country right the supply of of clinicians is where the problem is lucknow is where the clinicians reside that is where the government hospitals the medical colleges etc have traditionally been now my belief is as far as tertiary care is concerned okay the entire tertiary care of the region will be serviced through lucknow you cannot set up tertiary care hospitals in tier the three cities over there and in smaller cities because you know uh, doctors aren't willing to go there and stay there because the social infrastructure isn't there the school isn't there and so on and given the kind of roads which are being made the connectivity which is there and so on and so forth it will act like what delhi is in ncr you know you get people from various places now you will have lucknow you will have many more hospitals over there i mean for the entire state of 180 million people literally i mean the one and a half corporate hospitals and both of them are in lucknow you haven't heard of a third hospital in all of up right i believe right. you can have five more super specialty hospitals why one or two more the only question that i needed to ask at that point of time when we were even bidding for this piece of land is look okay does it deserve another super specialty hospital what if somebody else gets it and so on and so forth i think you know like in delhi our approach is a cluster approach we believe that is the next delhi ncr and uh, frankly it can do with many more hospitals got is that that sense and secondly with these uh, beds sort of coming up and uh, just to refresh per se uh, in terms of the uh, ebitda growth for say 25 26 weeks the kind of expenses that would be coming on board particularly for fy26 so if you could share in terms of whether we'll be able to grow on the ebitda front even in 26 you're talking about 26 or 25 now 26 uh, fy26 particularly Look, so imagine what's happening in to FY26, right? You would have have Dwarka, which starts now in the first uh, this thing of June. Okay, we break even by the end of the year. Okay, next year you definitely in the black and making money. You put all the building blocks of Lucknow and Nagpur in place. Both of them are profitable in any case. Okay, they become more profitable in 25. But look, it will have a A tremendous growth in 26 simply because this year we are putting all we be fixing everything and so on and so forth then you have three basically capacities coming in in uh, beginning of fy26 effectively which you will get the benefit of the whole year uh, will be uh, mohali 155 bed 329 beds in nanavati and 375 beds in max saket all three are brown fields i mean right in the adjacent to properties which are already fully occupied you should see the same sort of results that you've seen in any of our brownfields 
I mean, FY26 will be a very exciting year for us, in fact. I think this year, if you look at FY24, it was always meant to be a year of incremental growth. We were very fortunate we were able to add. In fact, 25 would have also been incremental growth if we hadn't added, uh, you know, sort of uh, both uh, Lucknow and Nagpur. So we'll have the EBITDAs and the revenues kicking in from both these. You add to it look, uh, uh, Dwarka, where you will have some losses, of course, uh, up till break even in the first year, okay, which will get more than absorbed by Lucknow and Nagpur. But next year, all three will be exploding. And in addition to that, you have three brownfields, okay, which don't, don't take time to uh, break even. Have you seen that in the past? Understood, sir. That's helpful. And just lastly, uh, what what made you know a push uh, or in fact prepon uh, the max part by almost nine months? If you could just elaborate on that, that's my last question. So, I mean, as you're aware, we were coming up with a much larger capacity in two phases in uh, max mart, uh, and we were uh, also coming up with the uh, first phase of max max Vikrant capacity. Now the fact is that we got delayed on Max Smart. So what we've done is instead of doing one phase of uh, uh, Max Grant, uh, which is uh, you know contiguous, which is join, adjoining on adjoining land, and doing uh, uh, two phases of Max Smart, we are doing one phase of Max Smart and two phases of of Vikrant. So uh, you know what we've done is essentially we prepone. We are not going to be making so many basements. Uh, that, that takes less time, and uh, you know we prepone the entire project. I mean. We'd rather have 375 beds uh, sooner than have 600 beds later and then another uh, 300 beds coming through Vikrant at an even later stage. Right now, you know, we've kind of caught up with Vikrant timeline, which was supposed to be later, and uh, that's how we've done this. Tushar, does that answer your question? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen... I'd like to add, so this should be a surprise to everybody. It's a pleasant surprise that we've been able to prepone uh, Max uh, Smart. I think a lot of people are expecting delays. Let alone delays, we've preponed this entire project. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone. We'll take our next question from the line of Damayanti Kerai from HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good evening, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, where you mentioned in your opening com comment, there were some visa issues in two markets, uh, which slightly impacted the international uh, uh, segment, international patient segment. Can you please elaborate on it? So, Zemanthi, basically, you know, there are, you know, markets of Iraq, et cetera, where we have AR build-up. So, we obviously took some calls on, on the trade control, and we said we will not take more patients till such a of our money. So I think that's what I was alluding to. There are also some markets where there's some disturbance on the visa side, right? So the, the, because, the, because of the elections, the visa sector were not being given, right? So that's the, these are the two, three markets that got impacted, right? So that's the, you, you'll find that overall we've been growing the international market by around, uh, international revenues by around 23%. This quarter it is 14, 15% growth. So a bit subdued growth because of these two, three reasons. Okay, and these are more temporary in nature, right? And once these get yes. preserved, yes. yes, yes, very much. Okay. okay. We continue to see great traction uh, with uh, new offices that we are opening overseas. It's very, very positive, and we intend to sort of double down on that further. Okay. Uh, so, in all focus market, you will be doubling down uh, your effort to get more uh, footballs. So we we started the direct to fly kind of uh, setting up offices. Okay, as you recall last year. And we've seen great traction with that and great uh, throughput through those. So we've seen a lot of success through the in new markets where we're setting up our own uh, uh, offices. So we will continue the strategy. Okay. And uh, with the way you mentioned attractiveness of uh, Lucknow uh, market in terms of uh, like demand and then availability of clinical talent, etc., uh, can you talk a bit about uh, how do you see the Nagpur market and uh, do we have similar supply of clinical talent in uh, that market too? Yeah, so I mean, uh, you have supply of clinical talent, but you know, if I look at the, the country of, if I look at India, uh, you know, uh, Lucknow, that way, is unique. Perhaps it has uh, the most amount of, uh, and, and just to give you an example, a lot of, at least 20% odd of our own doctors uh, in Delhi, uh, you know, which work for Max have come from Lucknow. 
So it's traditionally been a good thing. Of course, uh, Nagpur is also a repository for uh, clinical talent, but not to the same extent in Lucknow. Because, you know, Lucknow is Lucknow. You don't have other places the same sort of uh, this thing. I mean, I would compare uh, Nagpur more to a Dera zone and, you know, where we have hospitals which are doing quite well, etc. But I would, uh, you know, compare it to those markets rather than... Uh, having said that, it's also... It, it is emerging as the transplant capital of the country. Uh, because uh, you have huge amount of awareness of uh, organ donation and a lot of, lot of people, it seems to be a cultural thing, they are donating organs and so on. Also, it has uh, been a, a big this thing for um, uh, mouth cancer because of uh, much higher consumption of gutka and so on and so forth. So we are seeing a lot of oncology patients in Nagpur. So I think, you know, oncology being our mainstay, I have uh, no doubt that, uh, I mean, this, by the so let me also clarify, uh, you know, Nagpur also has, uh, you know, much fewer uh, sort of quality uh, healthcare assets. Uh, I, mean, I don't think there is anybody even um, compared to Alexis over there. Uh, competition is also significantly lesser. So we will have first dibs to pretty much uh, all the clinical talent over there. So we are quite comfortable that maybe less than Lucknow, but nevertheless, we'll get the best dibs. So I, we don't have a challenge getting the clinical talent. And the market itself is quite big. It also draws a lot from Madhya Pradesh. Sinwara and so on and so forth. Okay, understood. Of course, being this state, it also has great uh, connectivity and uh, infrastructure. Okay, and uh, my next question is uh, a quick clarification on occupancy. Uh, so now you're giving it on like for like basis, 75% for fourth quarter, and then you have given separate number for the uh, new unit. Uh, can you just just for understanding, uh, on a blended basis, uh, what what is the number occupancy number for fourth quarter? We don't Yeah. 73, but do keep in mind that uh, Nagpur has only been there since 9th of February, and that has been, uh, Lucknow has been there since 7th of March. So you don't get the full import of the fourth quarter, right? Got it. And my last question is, uh, like your upcoming hospitals, uh, most of which are uh, very... Uh, uh, which are most of which are located in very attractive location, uh, brownfield location, etc. So uh, for most, I guess we we are assuming break even within a year of uh, start of the operation. So uh, very broadly, like what kind of loss you generally incur when hospitals are ramping up? Maybe like loss per month or any indication. Hello. Hello. Uh, for your upcoming hospitals, most of which are brownfield, so I just want to understand uh, while hospitals are ramping up, what kind of loss you generally incur? So I'll give you the example of the last brownfield we did, mm -hmm. which we added about 152 beds on, I think, 240 or 250 beds. That would have broken even in 10 days or maybe 15 days, and by... The 40th day, the additional beds were generating 40% EBITDA margin. And in the whole year, I think uh, we have a 78% occ average occupancy of the new and the old beds. So brownfields don't take time to break even. They don't take years, they take a month. We normally say a quarter at best, but you know we've kind of outbeaten that every time. Uh, yeah, just like in NCR, I can understand uh, this kind of performance uh, we may expect. But is it true for, say, uh, Nanabati or uh, Mohali, etc. also? Uh, we, we should see similar uh, ramp up? No, no doubt. I mean, Nanabati is Bombay, right? I mean, in the heart of Bombay, you have another 375 beds of quality beds coming in. And in a place where no new hospitals come up in 20 years, I don't see a challenge in breaking even. Mohali, again, we all, it's the highest ROC, the highest occupancy that we have in the country right now is in Mohali, our Mohali Hospital. It's not Delhi and Bombay. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks for your response. No trouble with the Mohali. Thank you. We'll take a next question from the line of Neha Manpuria from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Um, based, you know, based, uh, given the uh, uh, background you gave on Lucknow, is it fair to assume that Lucknow can get to what we have margins for our corporate average, uh, you know, much faster, probably, let's say, in 26 itself? Uh, would that be a fair assumption, or do you think because of the addition, et cetera, that could take a little bit longer? See, addition is a separate thing altogether. Addition is a capital expenditure, right? No, no, I mean the cost associated with the addition, et cetera. 
I, I didn't get the question. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, yeah. Basically, in terms of margin, uh, we can probably get to the overall, you know, similar kind of margin very soon. Not, prob not probably, you know, in the initial part of the year, but maybe by the end of the year. But I think the bid up market will have to wait because I think the R pop there is low, right? So the R pop in Sahara Hospital when we took it was 40. So I think the R pop has to grow up, right? The margin on the lower R pop doesn't really mean much, much because we right. only see that in, in the bid up market metric, right? So bid up market will have to wait. I, I would say it'll take some time for to get to the level. But uh, you know, margin by, by probably the end of the year, we should be closer to what the margins are you know, on an overall basis. I think on all, uh, pretty much all RPOB and other matrices, uh, yeah. I think, uh, you know, we will be able to catch up in the next two years. Understood. When I say catch up, catch up, you know, you know the numbers of some of our peers over there, so I think yes, we should yes, be able yes, to yes, get yes. there if not further. Oh, okay, understood. And what about Lucknow, sir? Given the margins there, at least the numbers that you uh, gave seem, you know, close to 14-15%, um, and it's probably not as flourishing as uh, UP, would that take a little bit longer? and uh, a much slower pace to uh, Lucknow. Lucknow. Uh, Lucknow. 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 So, so Nagpur is a different RPOP. See, please understand. You know, different RPOP means different ROC as, as well. I mean, today, uh, you know, in Mohali and Dehradun, okay, you compare it to, uh, to, to a, uh, similar to a Dehradun rather than any other sort of this thing. I mean, you can't compare RPOPs of that to, uh, uh, to uh, Delhi and uh, Bombay for that matter. You'll be uh, looking at... Uh, Obviously, more subdued RPOBs, but uh, given the price you pay, you look at ROCs. Mm, so, if I were to look at the, uh, you know, uh, Nagpur uh, RPOB, it's very similar to where Lucknow is, right? So, that's why I was asking. So, will it take the same trajectory as Lucknow, or could that be a little longer? Today, today it, it is, but uh, Lucknow has uh, a potential and a lot more, right? Yeah. Like I said, uh, Lucknow, we will uh, sort of, if we even look at some of our peers who are operating there, they operate at a significantly higher RPOP, correct? Yeah. Nagpur as a market will, uh, you can use maybe Dehradun as a surrogate. Oh, okay. Understood. Got it. Okay. Uh, and in terms of, uh, you know, incremental uh, M&A, now that you've announced this uh, in land in Lucknow, uh, you know, you've always said we'd rather be, you know, the second or third player in in a market. Any markets that you think are interesting, uh, you know, particularly, uh, you know, given you've done two of these Nagpur and Lucknow now, which could uh, interest you? The 20 cities, where at least two people or three of my proven viability are doing fairly well. Uh, we intend to go there if we find the right uh, targets, and uh, you know, we are quite uh, confident we'll be able to perform better than them. And uh, Abhay, what would be a target leverage? I mean, let's say if you were to get a multiple, uh, you know, assets, what what leverage are you comfortable with in terms of when we're looking at M&A, particularly uh, given the strong know, cash flow generation? Yeah, so you know, we are quite comfortable going up to two and a half times debt to EBITDA, right? Got it. So if you actually are EBITDA at present, I think we will be circa two thousand crores. Okay, you have nineteen hundred seven, yeah. but if I add up, uh, you know. Uh, 11 months of EBITDA for both uh, uh, um, Nagpur and um, and uh, Lucknow. Okay, it'll be closer to 2000 and plus, right? And then you have growth in the current year. Uh, but uh, even if you take two and a half times that, you're getting some six, seven thousand crores of uh, yeah. uh, debt that we can use. Now, do keep in mind, anything bigger than that is uh, would mean that we are acquiring something which is listed. And if it's a listed entity, in any case, you'll have to look at a merger because you can't have a step down subsidiary of a listed company to be a listed company. Yeah, yeah. Understood. Fair enough. This is helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Andre Purushottam from Kogaito. Please go ahead. Um, thank you. I have two questions. Uh, so, may I request you to use your handset mode, please? Your audio is not very clear. Uh, can you hear me now? A little okay. better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I had two questions. Uh, one was, could you comment on the valuation parameters and, uh, in, in acquiring these two hospitals? Uh, they are at two different EBITDA multiples. Are they meant to be ROC equitable, or what is the philosophy in financial philosophy, apart from growth, obviously? Yeah, that was my first question. And my second question is that going forward in the next 12 months, how do you see the levers for profit working in your favor? 
whether it is increasing mix of international patients, whether it is uh, a better mix, uh, whether it is you know a lower proportion of government cases, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I just wanted to um, hear your uh, general outlook on the trends that you see in the next 12 months that will lead to profitable growth. I think two aspects. One is on the financial aspect. We seek a 20 to 25 percent uh, pre-tax ROC, uh, you know, within a space of four to five years. Uh, in both these cases, my belief is we will be able to hit that number uh, far sooner than that. Um, and you know, we do this by uh, uh, you know uh, seeing what is the value we are paying versus what we believe uh, with the adequate amount of uh, intellectual integrity. Uh, what is the business plan that we are able to or capable of underwriting? Uh, and so you do a goal seek to the, for that number at 20, 25% free tax ROC, and that's how we come up with the maximum that we're willing to pay for asset. Uh, you know, of course, we will pay that maximum. We try to negotiate and pay as little as possible, but uh, that's where we are on the financial side. Right. So I hope that answers the question as far as yeah. uh, what is Thank the fiscal target. Now, as far as drivers for the current uh, for the current year is concerned, I think um, it is all the of the year. things that you spoke about. Sorry, for the next twelve months. Eh? Next twelve months is uh, is this financial year, right? Effectively. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. The next fine. financial year. So if you take as a, well, instead of twelve months, I'll just draw a line at ten months or whatever, because that's the number of months left for the current financial year. I think all of these that you mentioned, uh, I think uh, higher international patients, uh, uh, so that means better payer mix, uh, a better clinical mix. We are seeing uh, more robotics happening. We are seeing more uh, sort of this thing on oncology, um, uh, more, uh, higher end surgeries and so on and so forth. So I think all of these things should be in play. Uh, we are also hoping that, uh, and we believe that, uh, you know, CGHS rates will get uh, uh, reworked and even on the institutional side, we are expecting better rates. Uh, so I think um, all of these are levers for us uh, in the current year. Uh, you know, other than that, uh, of course, uh, compared to last year, we would be adding the EBITDA uh, or an incremental EBITDA emanating from both Lucknow and Nagpur, uh, whilst uh, Dwarka will have uh, some sort of uh, initial losses at startup. But those initial losses at startup should be uh, we'll be able to more than absorb it. Uh, with our uh, uh, new uh, uh, profits that we're generating through uh, Lucknow and Nagpur. Right. And do you see any drags on profitability? No. Like I said, yeah. you know, of course you have, uh, you could, Dwarka will take time to break even, but uh, you are, you added two new capacities, uh, which is 500 beds, which are already generating uh, uh, profits and free cash flows. We will be adding to that. Yeah. That number is only likely to go up uh, in our under our watch. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll take our next question from the line of Binu Pati Parampil from Ilara Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, Krasnan. Uh, just two clarifications. Uh, one, uh, did you say you're adding, planning to add more beds in Nagpur over the over and above the 200 that's there? That's right. We're going to add another 150 beds on top of the 200 beds that we have. By when would that be? I think, uh, you know, we are working that out at present, but uh, definitely within the next uh, 24 months. I think we've given a timeline. Uh, yeah, so I think definitely within the next 24 months. 24 months, okay. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I didn't quite understand the um, the Sarkhade Smart and Sarkhade with Khan. So... Both put together, uh, how many bets are now getting added in FY26? No, Vikrant, nothing is getting added by 26. Uh, Taket is getting added by 26. Vikrant wasn't meant to be added by 26. Vikrant doesn't come in play, whereas uh, 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 Taket, which was going to be added in 27, has been preformed by nine months, is going to come through in uh, uh, Q1 FY26. That is 350 beds? 375 beds. 375. Sorry? 3? 375 beds. 375. 375. Okay. I was looking at your Feb uh, uh, investor presentation. That shows uh, Vikrant 300 beds in FI26. Is that old one? 
I don't know. I think maybe you're looking at the older presentation. Which presentation is you looking at, Nivesh? No, so I think the investor pension we have to change for all these 375 changes that are doing. I think that will be updated now with whatever we've done in terms of pre pawning the bets, right? So there are some bets being pre pawned, some being you know, kind of postponed. So I would say this pension will get updated in another week's time, the new one. And that is the one that should be referred, right? So because uh, as I mentioned, we've done some rejoining in terms of, you know, getting some bets in advance. And some bets are getting delayed for that reason. Okay. Understood. Um, thank you. I will refer to it. Your total, your total number of beds remain the same. But like I said, this gets pre pawned. Your total number of beds don't change. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Rishabh Tiwari from Allegro Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. So I have two questions. Firstly, what would our data look like now post trend uh, for this quarter and for the year? I don't give forward-looking projections. Sorry? We don't so provide forward-looking. Yeah. No, uh, for this quarter and for this year, the post-end. We don't provide guidance, right? So we don't generally provide guidance for the next quarter or for the year. No, I'm, I'm asking for Q4 and FI24. Yeah, so Q4 beta was 500 close from the existing, existing hospital, right? There's a three crore of beta which has come up from these, you know, two hospitals that we added in, in quarter four. One was in February, the other was in March, right? And the three crore is actually net of five crores of expenses that happened on the on the deal side. Uh, so the overall beta for the year is 1907 crores. This would be, uh, be post-end diagram, right? Post? In the yes. Yeah, post, I'm asking post-end, that is three in days. So for pre we have to reduce it by around, around uh, you know, 70 crores. So that would be, the, if we would want to take the leases up, that's the only difference in, in, in our case. So the lease cost would be around 70 crores. Uh, for, for the year or for the quarter? For, for the year. year. For the year. Okay. And, and uh, next question is, Abhi, you mentioned that uh, we took the occupancy uh, up from 54 to 62 in uh, Sahara Hospital. Uh, I just wanted to uh, know more about the collect. Was this through operational levers? Uh, did we uh, see some improvement in uh, seasonal mix or something? Uh, how did we take this uh, within a few months? No, it's changing some uh, basic processes. You know, you always have some very, very early, easy wins when you walk in, right? Because you've mm -hmm. seen those things. Those things kick in. These are very cheap early wins. Okay. Like, okay. Any okay. And have you to add any beds here as well in Sahara? We will be adding beds, like I said, we will be adding 140s and another 140 and then 350. Okay, okay, thanks. Thank you. We move on to our next question from the line of Amaya Sarke from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my questions and congratulations on a good cost of numbers. The first question I have on the volume growth, so IPD volume seems to be uh, around uh, low to mid single digit. Uh, anything to read there or to expect the volume group to remain at this kind of level? And second question I have uh, is uh, on the city selection. I understand we generally map 20 odd cities across the country. Uh, what would be the cities you would not like to enter into and what are the reasons for the same? Thank you. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, you have to keep in mind that our occupancy growth till we come up with uh, new capacity, brownfield or otherwise, okay, will be fairly muted because we don't we have a capacity constraint. I mean, we don't have places to put more patients, so uh, that's why we are doing the brownfield, right? So, uh, having said that, when we will have a constraint because of constraint on capacity, our occupancy ramp up will be limited. Uh, whilst uh, it will have a play, a positive impact on our pops. So what tends to happen is that the lower end surgeries get posted, okay, at, 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 a, uh, at a later stage, at a later date, whilst uh, the larger surgeries, the more significant ones, okay, get uh, priority as they should. Uh, so therefore, the lower end ones sometimes have a tendency of, of, of evaporating because the patients then decide to go to some other facility or some other uh, uh, brand. Uh, because they may not be very important sort of surgeries as well. So what happens is that your, uh, you know, whilst your occupancy 
डब्ल्यू एम पापी और आरपॉप ओके यू सी ए सिग्निफिकेंट ग्रोथ इन आरपॉप बट वेन यू कम अप विद ग्राउंड फील्ड कैपेसिटी द इंटरप्ले विच है ऑक्यूपेंसी रैम्स अप इमीडिएटली बट योर आरपॉप ग्रोथ बिकम्स मोर म्यूटेड Uh, having said that the impact on overall ebitda per bed is positive simply because you have huge operating leverages emanating in the new capacity that you had because you know the management cost the clinician cost etc has already been incurred by the previous capacity uh, so i just wanted to answer that question as far as uh, um, uh, occupancy is concerned and kind of assure you that there is nothing to read into it uh, simply that uh, uh, we don't have capacity so you know our occupancy obviously will go up at a smaller sort of pace Now, having said okay. that uh, when you look at uh, your second question was with respect to which cities i would not go to uh, so conversely uh, i would not go to cities where uh, my peers have not proven viability uh, or uncharted territories because uh, you know we don't see ourselves as pioneers going into places where uh, you know in taking chances we rather have somebody as define the market uh, be able to sort of demonstrate success go there and try to do it better uh, you know we've been very comfortable in doing it we've been successful in doing that so is there any city in which you think uh, is over supplied with the quality of the beds etc or it's just that the because it's uncharted territory that's why you don't want it now so let me give you an example look the maximum amount of beds okay in any geography is delhi ncr right the national capital region we have 11 hospitals over there and we have 2100 beds we are the largest players by far we are equal to the our next three peers put together multiplied by 2 in terms of number of locations and we are equal to all three of them put together okay as far as number of beds are concerned and the next 15 players have similar amount of bed location similar amount of uh, bed capacity yet we only have 2100 beds 10% of which are free 10% of which are catering to international business 40% of which are catering to up country so essentially if the largest player has 800 beds catering to the national capital region okay and the next three peers of mine okay that you heard of they also have 800 beds and then the next 15 people have 800 beds this is like 2400 beds or 2500 beds for a population of 48 million people which is 85% of uk's population and this is a place where you have the maximum water supply what So look i mean look at this places we are going to if we are going to lucknow i mean literally of the one and a half corporate players then we've come up with a hospital and this is a, you know a state with a population of 200 of 24 crore people which is your own population i mean we are in dehradun we are pretty much the only players over there we are mohali there has to be one more player i mean you look at i mean if some of my player peers are in patna but they are the only players over there If you look at places like Kanpur or Pune, this, that, that, I mean, every place is underserved, right? Even a place like Bombay, no new hospital come up in 20 years. I don't think India we have a problem of oversupply anywhere. Right, but in generally speaking about the Mumbai, like we generally don't see, uh, uh, except uh, I'm talking about the private hospital, we don't see uh, hospitals being overrun or something like that, or there is a like. like we have not seen many hospitals getting added but we have not seen capacity no, no, getting over we hold you there you haven't seen hospitals being added because to make a 400 bed hospital you need 4 acres of contiguous land firstly you can't five, find 4 acres of contiguous land in mumbai and even if you found it you'd rather make a residential complex or a commercial building there right right i mean no new hospital been made for 20 years i mean it's the same hospital hinduja the same breach canteen they haven't added one square inch where's the space Even H and they brought down an early hospital and made a new hospital, right? Bombay Hospital is the same one. Just look at the same one. Nanavati is the only one which has the land, so they built it. Thank you so much. I will join back. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Kunal from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, so you know, just kind of you know, continuing on the uh, previous question. Uh, so mature hospital we are at 75% and uh, we are saying that there is not enough capacity for us uh, but we have done quarters with 77 78% occupancy right so uh, what is it that is it a mix of hospital where you know our good hospitals are already full and some of the hospitals are below that 7500 and 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 
secondly if it's kind of across the hospitals you know we are facing a difficulty in terms of capacity uh then why our peer mix improvement is not accelerating in terms of reducing the institutional uh patients because kunal it's a seasonal business okay there are some quarters which are surgical quarters and some quarters which are medical quarters okay in a medical quarter you require rooms while surgical quarters you require more sort of icu beds and it's not every kind of capacity is not fungible across every hospital in fact some hospitals may have certain constraints that they are operating in 75% because you have maybe lesser single rooms where there is demand for and more ward beds where you don't have demand for and so on and so forth but whereas you know in a dengue season even the lesser sort of rooms or multi share etc get absorbed and that doesn't happen in in a surgical season so that's the reason that you know we are constrained by seasonality um, as well as the kind of infrastructure that we have now as far as uh, uh now as far as uh, the the uh, the pair mix is concerned okay the pair mix is a slow turn now uh you know if i look at ex shalimar bag ex new capacity that we've come up okay it's come down from 29 to 27% but there's been a 6% reduction as far as occupied bed days are concerned so i think what we are seeing is uh you know we are seeing a, a turn perhaps more so on the occupied bed days than anything else sure uh thank you but let's say when you say the 122 beds added in the shalimar uh, bag capacity or hospital and we say that uh, you know it's been uh, ebitda positive in 10 days is it more on a contribution margin because if i back calculate you know our pr makes uh, for that 122 beds uh, there'll be roughly 46 47% of those beds have been occupied by institutional patients right and we all know that the arpo bar roughly 50% of what you get Uh, in other channels so is it on a contribution margin we are seeing that uh, you know the ebitda turned positive in 10 days was it loaded uh, with the management cost or how should we think about that please let me explain. no no that's on a, that's on it now let's say ebitda it's a, it's after the incremental cost that you have to you know uh, incur for the those beds so it's not contribution it's ebitda try to get to understand that we had an option we had an option to open only 50 beds to start with not open all the 122 beds right so the so we, what we did is we said we'll open all the beds and try and fill up the balance also through the through the institutional beds uh, or institutional patients so there are two options that we had right so we chose for the option we said let's open all 122 beds and then try and fill up and then filter right then distill so that's where we are today but when we say number the number 40% is with the margin right after incremental cost In so so now, if, 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 if even one to two beds open, there are more man manpower being recruited, right? So there are nurses required, there will be GDs required, maybe less doctors, but there will be obviously there will be more electricity costs, etc. So it's after all those costs. So even with 46% kind of institutional payer mix, we are making 40% EBITDA there. Is is that the correct? Yes, because because the incremental cost of those running those beds, which we open, is very less, right? we let me explain this separately if let's say if you look at bed by bed unit wise right or let's say all 100% of the beds over there okay were uh, uh, you were operating only for institutional business it will still be a bit da positive okay okay it will be a bit da positive simply because you got operating leverage the only thing you're getting over there in necessarily okay is the nurses which is not very expensive is the resident doctors again not very expensive okay and allocated to those beds alone which are operational what you're not doing is you're not fitting out beds and you're not uh, sort of staffing beds where you don't have capacity you just open floor by floor right whatever you have demand for so there's no fixed cost associated or fixed variable cost associated with beds which are not operational hmm. and the ones which are operational we have only the low end cost it does not have high end sort of clinicians etc or minimum guarantee which are being taken on board for that because those clinicians already exist the minimum guarantee is already paid utilities are common the general sort of uh, uh, you know your um, uh, uh, management cost is already being incurred you don't operate a separate ceo separate medical director separate hr separate marketing nothing for that okay thank you uh, thank you for that and 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 if i may just you know one more uh, on the uh, supreme court matter uh, you know now uh, it seems 
the, the next date for that um, you know hearing of PIL seems to be a, somewhere around September. So what's your internal assessment? Is it kicking the can down or 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 would you say that you know the the risk uh, of uh, adverse uh, outcome has reduced meaningfully in your view? How do you view that? I would not want to comment on it. It's a Supreme Court matter. It's sub judice. Okay, we've seen the rap IMA got, so I definitely don't want to be speaking about it. But I think the last hearing, uh, the comments, uh, the observations of the judge, etc., were for everybody to hear and uh, make their own inferences. Please. Sure. Thank you and all the best. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll take our next question from the line of Shubham Harne from Purnartha Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. On Dwarka bat, uh, I want to ask a question. Uh, so that get, uh, bats getting added in tranches or it will be on one go? No, in transit only. I think, you know, because our occupancy will also have been transit only. Okay. So initially, uh, earlier you have said 160 bed will be added and then 140, like uh, something like that only. Okay. Obviously, also ramp up, ramp up in that manner. No, no point, fit, uh, you know, staffing on all the 300 beds and as you are you don't have occupancy day one of all three. Got it. Uh, and on Gurugram Sector 56 Hospital, uh, by when it will get commissioned or something from the state around that? We gave the date, I think, uh, one second. Uh, I think uh, Gurugram Sector this thing, uh, we should be, we delayed by six months. So whatever yeah. the original decision is later by six months. I think it will be... Uh, Third quarter uh, of uh, 26 or 25. Q3 FY26, yes. 25, 26 or 25? 25, no? Calendar year 25. 25 is current year. Calendar year 25. year 26. Oh, okay, got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Rishabh Tiwari from Allegro Capital. Please go ahead. So just one follow-up on the lease, uh, lease impact. So 70 uh, crores is what you mentioned for the year. Uh, is this taking into account the recent acquisition? Could you please uh, uh, help us with the light to light number? So for the, the recent uh, acquisition doesn't have any lease rentals, right? Uh, okay. So that land is uh, obviously getting to to free hold. Uh, we already put one in application. So this is on the existing hospitals. Okay, that helps. Yeah. Thank you. 71 crores is a total impact. Uh, there is one or more two entries right now which comes up in the in the in the below the line. So I'm taking all those. There is a donation also. There is a liability for donations that we have. So that also mm -hmm. comes up. Comes up. So 71 crores is the total impact of the India's movement. If I was to do either have accounting, then the 71 will come before the bidder. Okay. Thank you. I, I Thank think you. Uh, I think uh, you know just the last this thing. I think the important one. Uh, I don't know if you picked up my statement or not, that during the fiscal year, we generated 1,336 crores of free cash flows from operations. This is after interest, tax, working capital changes, and routine capital also, let alone leases. So our translation of uh, EBITDA, post-India's EBITDA, to free cash flows, post-India, uh, uh, pre-India's impact, pre, uh, um, you know, interest, uh, tax, working capital changes, and routine capex, etc., 70%. This is a significantly high number. Thank you. We'll take our next question from the line of Sentil Kumar from Joinry Capital Services. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question is, uh, what is the management policy on writing of goodwill and other intangible assets over a certain period of time? as a matter of uh, prudent accounting policy. So, what is in? Uh, uh, management policy on uh, writing of goodwill and uh, intangible assets, sir. No, so, goodwill is not under the NDS. The goodwill is only, only tested for impairment. Intangible assets represent some of these contracts that we obviously, over the period of time, we are writing down off, right, over the period of the contract. Uh, but there is an element of uh, brand in the intangible, which we again test for impairment, right? So the so the in the India's accounting standards require us to only only test for impairment the goodwill and the brand, and for the other other intangibles you will find that they are coming down progressively, you know, year after year because we put in them in the in the amortization charge. 
Yeah. Okay. okay, understood. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. We'll take our next question from the line of CA Vipul Makwana from Makwana. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, good set of numbers, Abhay sir. Uh, uh, apart from my peers at all. Makwana, can you use your handset mode, please? Your audio is not very clear. Yeah, hello. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah better, apart yeah. from uh, all the financial queries which my peers have asked, I just want to ask on the qualitative aspects, like what is Max doing separately or uh, consciously different than the others where we're seeing a good number set, like on our pops and everything. So, Mr. Bai, if you could just throw some light on it. I think first and foremost, uh, you know, proof of the pudding line, li lies in its eating. The fact that we have a significantly higher occupancy levels than any of our peers or whatever means that we are doing uh, well on qualitative aspects as well. Uh, you know, we uh, and uh, the value proposition that we're able to provide to our patients. Uh, you know, it's not only Delhi, Bombay. Our highest occupancies also continue to be in tier two, tier three cities. So yes, I think the you know it's 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 for people to perceive. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the patients to perceive more than what I can say, uh, you know, in terms of what is the quality that they uh, sort of this thing. Yes, we continue to um, to cater to a lot of uh, free patients. Uh, there are thousands of patients in a year that we treat free of cost. And I mentioned uh, to, I think, uh, 35,000 patients in OPD and some 1,500 patients in IPD in the last quarter itself that we treated. Uh, we, uh, all our hospitals are teaching hospitals. We have 850-odd uh, uh, students, uh, both uh, these are postgraduate students. We write uh, a lot of, uh, you know, you've seen the number of publications that we're doing, which is the highest ever that we did last year, both for international and domestic journals. So we continue to uh, to uh, uh, academics and research as well, besides, uh, you know, of course, the financial parameters that we operate. That helps, that helps. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll take our next question from the line of Amit. An individual investor, please go ahead. Uh, my question has been answered. Thank you so much, Abhay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank each one of you for either covering the company or having invested in the company. We appreciate that, and uh, we believe uh, the next uh, uh, two years will be uh, years of uh, uh, exponential growth for us, uh, particularly FY26, uh, uh, where a lot of uh, things are going to be coming on stream. So uh, we look forward to an extremely lucrative journey going forward. Thank you. Thank you, members of the management team. On behalf Thank of you. Max Healthcare Institute Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.